In this video I present you with a number of suggestions of a New Zealand itinerary for 10 days. Stay watching to find out about some of my other itinerary suggestions. Day 1. Arrival into Auckland, the largest city in New Zealand. Travel into the city and view some of the icons of Auckland, like the Auckland Harbour Bridge, the sparkling waters of the Waitemata Harbour, Rangatoto Island, One Tree Hill and the Auckland Domain and Museum. Have lunch or dinner in one of the restaurants in the Sky Tower, or down at the water, at the Viaduct or the Wynyard Quarter. Nice early start on day two. Head off and follow the longest river in New Zealand, the Waikato River, to the famous Waitomo glowworm caves, to enjoy the delight of the glowworm grotto and marvel at the thousands of years old stalagmites and stalactites. Otorahonga is an interesting lunch stop and known for its kiwiana. Be sure to browse through the Sir Edmund Hillary walkway, which has some fascinating exhibits about early New Zealand. After lunch, head off to Rotorua via Cambridge and the quaint little town of Piro to view some fascinating sculptures made of corrugated iron. Be sure to book and attend the Tamaki Māori Village Cultural Experience for a highly entertaining evening and an insight into the Māori culture. I have a link to my video in the description below. Spend day three in Rotorua exploring this geothermal wonderland Visit places like Tupuya or Waiotapu for the best free boiling mud pools in Rotorua. Or the free geothermal Koiro Park, where you can soak your feet in the geothermal waters. Again, I have links to my videos for these attractions in the description. A visit to Agrodome is a must do, and finish the day relaxing in the world famous Polynesian pools. Rotorua also has an exciting restaurant area down at the bottom end of the town, known as Eat Street. Day 4, try and get an early flight to Christchurch, as to allow you to explore this once very English city. Visit the Botanic Gardens and the Canterbury Museum. Ride the tram for some fascinating commentary about Christchurch. Day 5, Christchurch to Franz Joseph or Fox Glacier. This day offers some options. Take the world famous Trans Alpine Rail journey to Greymouth and pick up your rental vehicle from there. Drive over Arthur's Pass and discover some of the hidden gems along the way, like Lake Pearson. Continue through to Hokitika in the Jade, Punamu, or Greenstone capital of New Zealand. You will travel through the small townships of Ross. The largest gold nugget was found here. Hari Hari. View the replica of Guy Menzies' tiger moth that he crossed the Tasman in, and Whataroa, home to the Kotuku, or the White Heron. Eventually you will arrive at Franz Joseph. Time and weather permitting, you could take a walk or a helicopter flight to view the glacier. On to Queenstown on day 6. This is a very long day as you travel down the west coast of the South Island, passing Kettle Lakes, towering mountains, waterfalls and massive rock slides. Drive along the Haas River, stopping to view many of the waterfalls along the way like Roaring Billy Falls, Thunder Creek Falls and Diana Falls. As you drive over the gates of Haas, marvel at the size of the rocks that have made their way down the Haas River from the mountains. Pass by Lake Wanaka and my favourite lake, Lake Hawea. Eventually you will start to see civilization in the form of Albert Town and Wanaka. Here you have to make a decision to go over the Crown Range or the longer route via Cromwell, one of the fruit bowls of New Zealand, where you could stop at the world famous Mrs. Jones fruit store to stock up on some healthy treats. Both routes are equally scenic. Day 7, time to take a driving break and explore the ever popular Queenstown with just about every activity under the sun to do. Jet boat rides, bungee jumping, giant swings, wine tours, or a lazy relaxing cruise on the TSS Earnslaw across Lake Wakatipu to Walter Peak. This next day, day five, takes you on one of my favorite drives into the majestic, world famous Milford or Doubtful Sound. 
If doing Milford, the more popular, I highly recommend taking an organized tour as there is just so much to see. And if self-driving, the driver will miss out on so much of the wonderful scenery or become a hazard to other road users like us coast drivers, especially as this is a very limited itinerary. The road to Milford Sound is steeped in history and winds through some breathtaking scenery with towering cliff faces, hanging glaciers, stunning crystal clear rivers. Stay in Tiano for the night and maybe take the Fiordland Jet Safari. If you miss the Waitomo Glowworm Caves or would like to see more, take the Tiano Glowworm Cave Tour. Day 9, up bright and early, and head off to Dunedin, this very Scottish southern city. Get in by noon after a quick toilet stop in Gore, and explore the Otago Peninsula, visiting Lanark Castle, the Albatrosses, and yellow-eyed penguin colonies. Maybe just take in the rich history of this once very wealthy city by visiting the Early Settlers Museum or climb the world's steepest street, Baldwin Street. A drive to the top of Signal Hill always affords spectacular views of Dunedin. Day 10 has you returning to Christchurch and either departing that evening or the following morning. However, this 360 kilometer drive will take you past intriguing places like the Moraki Boulders or Maru before heading up the Canterbury Plains through towns like Timuka, Timaru and Ashburton to Christchurch. Again, I have links to some of these videos in my description below. So this is just one suggestion of a New Zealand itinerary of 10 days. Please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be updated so that I can help you make informed decisions to better maximize your time here in New Zealand. Click this card for more itinerary videos. Click this card for some of my other videos.